Hey, welcome back. We are still at the Retool Fit World Headquarters here at Specialized Bike Company in Morgan Hill. Uh, we're hanging out with Supermaster Jedi level bike fitter, Aaron Post. And what we're talking about is how do I translate Formula One back into the lives of mortal people? Like, I just want to be fit. I want to burn some calories. I want mm -hmm. to feel good. Can we, does, you know, I know in my heart that we have, you guys have figured out a lot about how to be more successful, how to get more wanted, to be more yep. comfortable. But sometimes those messages don't translate very well. So I brought in my Concept 2 bike. Mm -hmm. right? They're in a lot of gyms. Does the saddle matter? Because, I mean, you know, theoretically, I think I understand this, but I think most of us just get on a saddle and we're like, it's good, right? And if we're riding at home sometimes on old bikes or we bought yeah. some non-specific bike for me, I mean, clearly my 15-year-old daughter and I should not necessarily be using the same seat, I think, right. right? So talk me through that. Does saddle matter? Besides, like, yeah. my uh, junk going numb, right? Because I think that's all people think about. Right. There's always this idea that bike seats are just uncomfortable. I'll just suck it up for this 45-minute session, Ooh. and I'll get through it. It's fine. I'm here for the workout. Seat doesn't matter. Absolutely, it matters. And it's unique for every rider. You know, one of the things you learned about yourself, Kelly, you're like, I'm a bigger guy, right? I got some bigger hips. Well, I should be on a bigger saddle. It's not about nope. your exterior measurements. It's about your actual sit bone width. And it can vary greatly from individual to individual, as much as 10 centimeters between two different people. Wow. So you need to get each individual measured, and they should have a saddle that's unique for their sit bone size. And whether they're doing it on their bike that they're riding outside, or on an indoor trainer, or at the gym, they could even have their own saddle that they use on their training equipment. Because you know, people are, I mean, right now there is a, we're back into a renaissance of mm -hmm. training at home. There's so many good tools, so many good platforms, yeah. uh, you know, follow along at home. But I don't think we think about this. I think like, hey, I've already invested in some shoes, right? Isn't this good enough that comes with it? So, so there's a couple things that, obviously matter around the saddle and it's not just this cutout right i think that's where we're like oh it's a cutout it's perfect i have i have i have meat yep there's a there's a spot for that um but let's be a little bit more specific because we we can talk about you know saddle position things in another another piece but talk us through how, what that would look like because if i didn't know better i didn't realize that there were so many saddles especially if you go on amazon you're just like bike bike saddle mountain bike saddle right yeah. talk, come over here show me show me how you guys and gals at Retool Specialized solve this? Like I was mentioning, I can't just look at you and know what your sit bone distance I'm is. I'm 6'2", 233. Like, I'm yeah. kind of a big person, kind of. I mean, I have big friends, but. Yeah, and, and you're totally a big deal, which is why I want to make sure that you've got the exact saddle that you need to make sure that all this money you invested in a bike or in your training equipment is customized for your unique needs. Now, when I was here and had this fit process, it blew my mind when I learned that I actually have a very narrow set of ischial tuberosity. So the sit bones, mm -hmm. bottom of your pelvis, and everyone was shocked because, and it's one of the things that's sort of the signature of my squat is it looks like my knees go out, mm -hmm. but it's because my pelvis is so narrow. So how, how are you measuring this and how does that relate to what saddle I have? Because I, I have a pretty narrow saddle. Yep. Some people would say this is even like a women's saddle based <laughs> on the anthropometry. It's not men or women, but it's really just about this, this right. width of the, the sit bones. What we use is a pressure mapping device that digitally connects to an app that we run on an iPad. And I can, based on your pressure mapping, measure the distance in between your sit bones and then select a saddle width that will appropriately support your individual pelvis. What happens if I'm on a saddle that's too wide? What does that feel like? Oddly enough, saddles that are too narrow and too wide kind of feel the same. If a saddle's too wide and your sit bones, like you may have experienced before, are being wedged forward, you can't get back here onto the wider part of the saddle because your sit bones are closer together. So it pushes you forward onto the smaller part of the saddle, then you fall off these slopes and then you get no saddle support. You've got all sorts of midline pressure, all sorts of problems. Saddle feels terrible. midline pressure. That's is yeah. that is that what the bike experts call it? Midline that's, pressure. That's easy. When we talk about where on the saddle you're feeling the pressure, makes it a lot easier for us to have nice. that discussion.
and it's true. We, when we talk about numbness and tingling, mm -hmm. when we have occult things going on or pathology, I say saddle area. So For sure. I'm going to say midline area. Right. That's like, and it doesn't matter, women or men, you're going to kind of have those same kind of sensations, whether the saddle is too narrow or too wide, right? Saddle that's too narrow and your sit bones are way out here, you might literally try to push yourself back on the saddle to try and create more width, but it's still going to feel like there's not enough saddle underneath you. So again, you have that midline pressure. One of the interesting things I think people fail to appreciate sometimes in this conversation is your hamstring and adductors come in and insert right around that ischial tuberosity. Yeah. So in that neighborhood. And so if you have too much saddle or not enough saddle or you're adjusting, mm -hmm. you potentially are loading some of those tissues which aren't loaded. Your sit bones are weight-bearing surfaces. Right. They're designed to handle large loads. Yeah. Your hamstrings are not weight-bearing surfaces. Right. That is definitely an area of concern for a lot of riders. And it's part of the reason why there's a whole bunch of different shapes. So not only can you get saddles in different widths, just looking outside to outside, but like with your saddle, yours has a, a lot more slope on the outside. We call this more of like a, a rounded or a curved saddle versus a more traditional like flat saddle across the side. Because if you've got a rider who's experiencing some of that hamstring impingement, maybe a little limitation or irritation on the inside of their legs, a flatter saddle might be causing some of that irritation where more of a rounded saddle allows a little bit more freedom of movement right at that sensitive insertion point. We have a whole bunch of friends, Matt Vincent, Thick Boy B Bike Club, we call, it, kind of call ourselves the Russian Circus Bear Bike Club, right? For sure. Where are these gigantic guys? And I do have a lot of meat around this. And that little tapered rounded edge has really mm -hmm. changed my comfort because I don't feel like I'm just jamming my adductors into this thing right. designed for a 135-pound elite Tour de France cyclist. Yeah. Right? Okay, so let, can, I, can I jump on this and measure this? Yeah. Make sure we're turned on here. Yep. Got my little retool logo across so there. What do I do? I just sit here? facing that way, sitting on the pressure pad like you're sitting on the edge of a park bench. Okay, there we go. I can I, I feel right. my Back is pressure. straight. Knees are at 90 degrees. Your weight should be back on your seat, right? And then what we get there is a pressure reading that'll show you where those peak pressure points are. That's right where your sit bones are. I can capture that. I'll ask you to stand up and sit back down again for me, please. I like to do it a couple of times to kind of average out the results. And one more time for me, please. Once you settle in there, 89 millimeters. So like what you were mentioning before, averages are great, okay? And they say, on average, females have slightly wider sit bone widths than men. None of the averages matter because it's your saddle. You don't right. want the average saddle. You want yours. So it doesn't matter that average male sit bone width, and the last time I pulled the data said it was 114 millimeters. Because if I got you the saddle for 114 millimeters, you'd feel like it was too wide. You'd feel that irritation along the inside of your legs. So we get you a saddle in the right size with the right shape based on your unique measurement to make sure that you feel good sitting on your bike. So let's say that, I mean, I think this is amazing. And the original was like a pressure pad that I sunk into some foam and then you guys yep. measured it. That's so yeah, cool. Yeah. We still use those too. So, you know, it not everybody that's has right. the you, digital right. equipment. Somebody wants to use a pad. How totally would I, good. let's say... I want to start to think about this. Is there a way without getting fit where I could sort of roughly have this idea? Is there, are there any rough rules like the heel to the pedal rule around saddle? It's funny you bring this up. We've been talking a lot about this internally here at Specialize, right? A lot of us are stuck at home. A lot of us don't necessarily feel safe going into a store right now. You want to do this measurement at home? I bet you you've got some Amazon boxes laying around, a lot of corrugated cardboard. So just like that foam pad, you could stack two or three pieces of that corrugated cardboard up, sit down on it, really pull your butt bones, pull those sit bones down into that cardboard, stand up, and I bet you it'll leave a, a good enough indent that you could take a marker, 
find the middle point, and then measure it to get your own sit bone measurement at home. Great. And then saddles will tell me what range I would be in. So I flip this over. Flip this over. Specialized saddles will actually mark the outside to outside width on here. Now, I can't speak for every saddle manufacturer in the world, right. but generally speaking, if they don't have it written on the, on the outside, you can measure the outside to outside width, and you want approximately a centimeter to two centimeters more saddle width than what your actual sit bone measurement is. So I think this is, this is a 143, no? Yeah, that's a 143. Right. Which on the face of it might seem a little wide for your narrow sit bone width. However, the thing to consider is this sloping shape also changes the effective seating area, right? Outside right. to outside, it's if it was- not the same thing. Right, uh, okay. outside to outside, these two saddles are the same width, but this 143 that's nearly perfectly flat across the back different. fits a wider range than a saddle where it's like the ears are folded down, so the effective seating area Makes perfect sense. is narrower for so your sit bones. So what you're saying is when I go to a spin class and I'm on a bike seat that's like this big, yeah, that's less great? The saddles that come on spin bikes are trying to fit the preconceived notion around what a comfortable saddle should be. They're super soft. You can almost push all the way in and then hit the plastic. They're typically pretty wide, thinking, oh, if we just give them a bunch of surface area, they'll use all of that and that'll be more comfortable. But remember, if it's too wide, it's going to wedge you onto an uncomfortable part of the seat. If you've got exercise equipment at home, if you have the opportunity to swap stuff out at the place that you go to use it, get your own saddle that is measured for your sit bone width and dramatically improve your comfort on that training equipment. I suspect it's got to, if I'm more comfortable, that usually translates into better wattage and power and more sustainability, right? Because it's mm -hmm. really, it's the second ride, the third ride. I think a lot of people end up with tightness, stiffness, soreness. Maybe you can mitigate some of that. Uh, there's a, a couple of things that you could think about. Uh, you can't fire a cannon out of a canoe. I've if heard you that before. don't have stability, you're not going to be able to generate max power, max efficiency, and make sure that your joints and your muscles are safe. So getting the right saddle, make sure that you're stable on that saddle, then you can kind of generate the power that you're hoping to achieve. The other thing to think about is, is it's like the foundation of your house. You want the foundation of your house to be very stable, and then you can build as big of a house as you want on top of it. So get the right saddle for yourself and you can build whatever fitness level, whatever comfort level you can just based on your own ability then. It's like, how hard do you want to work out? You're not thinking about the saddle being uncomfortable anymore. You're only thinking about pushing power to the pedals. I'm thinking about my lungs right. on fire, my legs not being big enough to hang off my lungs. Amazing. Thank you so much. Here's the, here's the takeaway. I suspect you can probably do better than you're currently doing on your current exercise bike and, or your trainer bike, right? Yeah. Invest as much in that saddle if you can as the saddle that you're riding. If you're a rider, if not, get the best saddle you can, even if your jam is just riding on the Peloton. I mean, that's yep. fair Absolutely. game. See you guys next time.